views expressed in the videos are my observation, analysis of events, persons based on principles of astrology. It's not my intent to predict, forecast absolute outcomes, only suggest how they may unfold. Nothing is set in stone. I could be wrong, but often I'm right. My desire is not to promote fear, only inform about what we see unfolding. It is our wish to prepare our subscribers for events that could affect them, their family, their goals, and their future, to help to prepare for what you may already feel suspect is happening, and to send a warning shot across the bow and raise a flag of concern. Our goal is to help, not hinder, in these perilous times, to inspire and offer possible direction, and to reveal that a greater plan and purpose are behind all that is happening. Eventually, we will see a brighter day. If you would like to show your appreciation for our work on these videos or this channel, and also the Knowing Whispers channel, you can always click on the word thanks at the bottom of all the videos. Hello everybody, it's Robert Cosmar again of the Astrology of Life YouTube channel and also the three Substack newsletters, Knowing Whispers, Messages from the Universe, Trump and America, and Ask the Astrologer. This is my second video today and it involves a considerable amount of charts and I'm not going to go heavily and deeply into each one of the charts, but I want to point out some things for you to look at or to look for uh, during the debate on the 27th. So I've got maybe five or six charts of Trump, five or six charts of Biden, and also one progress chart of Trump that I think is really important here. So I want to give you an overview of what the astrology may indicate about the way these two individuals feel and how they handle themselves on that night. This inner wheel here is the Trump uh, horoscope. This is the outer transits, June the 27th at 9 p.m., the beginning of the debate, hopefully. Okay. And there are several things you can gather over here looking at the Aspectarian. And one of those is level of confidence, how you are emotionally, whether your thinking is scattered, okay, whether you're afraid, whether you have a lot of heavy things on your mind. Uh, there's just a lot of things here that you can gather from just looking at the Aspectarian here. And you can see here that the Sun is very closely squaring Neptune. And this again speaks to Trump's confidence level. How truly confident is he on his mind, his ability to uh, express himself, his ability to understand what is going on and to maintain a flow, a consistent flow of his thinking? Or is he scattered? Is he delusional? Things like this. Transiting Moon is also squaring his natal Moon and Sun. This is another situation where emotionally and mentally that he may not feel totally relaxed and comfortable. Okay, that there could be a great deal of emotion churning inside of him, anxiety, anticipation. Okay. The moon trining Venus here is kind of a, a saving grace in a way. It also trines Saturn here. And that on dealing with the specific issues and stuff, he may be able to gain some focus and clarity and to express himself fairly well in that particular area. Okay. As you go down here, you'll notice at the very bottom, there's Mercury conjunct Venus. Okay. Uh, an indication of an ability to be pleasant if he wants to be. Whether he'll stay that way or not, it's really hard to say. And then down here, you can see basically Mercury squaring Jupiter. This really is scattered thinking. Okay very scattered thinking, you know, being all over the place. You can also see Mercury conjuncting Saturn here, uh, dealing upon the Saturn issues, okay, difficulty in communicating, limitations and restrictions in communication, and being able to be more fluid, 
Okay. Again, here is Venus conjuncting Mercury. Okay. So there is the opportunity here for him to be rather pleasant and agreeable in expressing himself so that he doesn't scare everybody on the planet with some of his outrageous statements that he makes in front of his MAGA crowd. You have to keep in mind that this debate doesn't have an audience, so he cannot feed off the energy of the audience who are out there saying, yeah, that a boy, this type of thing. He has to focus upon the question at hand and he has to deal with expressing himself in a way that would look presidential, which was going to be extremely difficult for him. Okay. You can see here that Mars is squaring Pluto. So he may get triggered. You know, it's very possible that Joe Biden will know signs of weakness in him and choose to attack him in a rather mature, confident manner. But that's not exactly how Trump will take that. That is something that will fire up, you know, and, and anger in him. In fact, I would imagine that in, in plotting Joe Biden's strategy, he wants to throw Trump off his game. He wants him to get angry. He wants him to look foolish. All right. That's the quickest way for the majority of people, all right, to understand how unfit he is to become the president of the United States. Now, Saturn squares both his sun and his moon. This affects his ability to behave confidently. This is carrying that heavy baggage of all the legal stuff going on, all the karma that he's having to deal with. Okay? So, you can bet that while he's capable of being charming and gracious in maybe a very fake way, the deep down inside, he's carrying the heavy weight of all the stuff that's going on around him and to him. And that he's probably not very far away from losing it. And it'll be interesting to see how skillful Joe Biden is in poking the bear, so to speak. Okay. And going forward here beyond Saturn, you can see here Saturn squaring Uranus. Uranus and Jupiter, that trine in his chart, is one of the most powerful aspects in his horoscope. Okay, and again, here's Saturn's influence. Saturn on the north node, on the south node. Okay, uh, again, dread. Dread over what is happening to his plans, what is happening to his goals and ambitions. Uh, could he lose support from putting himself out there? He's really risking it. In fact, uh, whoever decided that they were going to do this on the 27th, they didn't do him any favors. <clears throat> and I'll explain that a little bit more here in a little bit. Because uh, it's going to have a, a real serious impact, I think, upon him. Okay? Moving on down the line, here's the infamous Uranus squaring Mars. All right? This may have to do with the Supreme Court. Okay? Turning you know, in a sense against him, while everybody's concerned that they may do something for him, particularly presidential immunity. But then again, it could be something that he brings upon himself, you know, an accident, you know, a, a change in his health is possible um, with this type of a combination. And it also rules the unexpected, okay? You can see here that Uranus is squaring the ascendant, okay? Uh, so there's all kinds of unknowns, really, in both his chart and in Biden's chart. Um, but I would have to say at this point that uh, the situation regarding Donald Trump, when you look at the transits and you take a look at the progressed aspect that is almost exact that same day, that his ability to effectively communicate himself in a way that anybody in a debate would like to is going to be greatly hindered by everything that's around him. Okay. All right. Now, moving down here beyond Uranus, conjuncted the Medheaven. It's already gone beyond that. It's already touched Algol. Okay. We're going to take a little bit deeper look here what's going on. Okay. I'm going to pass this right here. And we'll go down here to Eris. Eris is squaring his natal Venus and his natal Saturn at this particular time. Okay. Uh, this brings in the element of him needing to complain 
needing to vent, needing to be irritated about disagreements, okay, in the media, in the news, from the Democratic Party about his particular view of reality, his particular view of what it is that he feels that he needs to do. So, again, from all the things that I've talked to you about here in this video concerning Donald Trump, you should get a pretty good idea that he's going to be on edge, okay? Uh, the idea that he is not going to be able to interrupt Joe Biden, uh, I'll have to wait and see that. The idea that he will comply with the demands of this particular debate and not disrupt it, I'll believe that when I see that, okay? Um, his ability to deceive is something that you can see that he knows consciously that he can use to great advantage. He has used it ever since he denied the election in 2020. And you see the effect of that. You see the effect of his denial and his creating disruption and doubt and fear. He will want to continue that same plan when it comes to dealing with Joe Biden. That will be really his unconscious plan. He will probably not have much recourse because we know that mentally, we know that politically, we know that psychologically, we know that internationally, the man doesn't have all his ducks in a line, okay? So all he can do, which he has done for six years, is to create disruption so that people won't listen to what Joe Biden is saying, will not see with the effectiveness of which he says it, and will basically consider that the whole thing was a waste of time and a mess. All right. But going back to what I said earlier, all right. He has a progressed aspect here that I'll talk about in a little bit. All right. That um, will probably, along with these transits, make it very difficult for him to be effective. In fact, they were really wise to do things the way that they're doing this. I, I know for certain that it's in an auditorium where there is no audience. And I believe that the person's mic that is not speaking is turned off so that there can't be on the mic disruptions like there were in the first one. And um, it's going to be, you know, unfortunately, it'll probably be very entertaining in a very foolish way. And uh, it may not have the impact that the Democrats would like to have, the knockout punch. Okay, if Joe Biden can do a knockout punch in this particular um, debate, this is the best time to do it. All right. All right, let's move forward here, and I'm debating on whether or not this goes into Joe Biden. I'm going to go to the progress chart. There we go. This is the secondary progress chart. It's 9 o'clock p.m., June the 27th. There are several progressed aspects in effect in, Joe, or in Donald Trump's chart. One of those is the progressed Mercury in the 12th house squaring his midheaven. Okay? It is 21 minutes beyond that. Okay? Or actually seconds beyond that. And it has to do with his midheaven. All right? Communications. Okay? Goals and ambitions. Midheaven. Fate. Okay? Your aspirations. He's going to have difficulty communicating. All right. Things will probably be so charged, so emotionally charged around him that like a desperate swimmer trying to save themselves from drowning, he'll make a lot of noise. OK, but what he says may not be understandable. All right. And there are some other things here to be considered as well. You can see here that Venus is becoming very close within eight minutes of squaring his Saturn. There's a lot of reports that are starting to come out that people believe that Melania may be getting ready to divorce him. Okay? Again, this could be another okay, um, situation in which Trump is getting things piled upon him. 
okay, that uh, uh, the only thing that he really lives for is to win the, the presidency. But yet all of these things that he's losing, his wealth, maybe his marriage, uh, losing the support maybe of his children in, in Ivanka's case, um, these have to weigh themselves very heavily. I think that most people would think that if they were in Donald Trump's shoes, they would have committed suicide a long time ago. But again, for me, this is a confirmation that Donald Trump knows who he is, why he's doing what he's doing, and what it is he hopes to accomplish. All right. So this takes it above and beyond just the realm of human psychology. Okay. So he has these other aspects, these other progressed aspects that are going on here. Here is an aspect of progressed Jupiter squaring, okay, Venus, okay. Uh, again, uh, it's a sign of overextension. It's a sign of, of getting yourself in some ways financially into deeper trouble. He owes, I believe, some, some billionaires a lot of money, okay, for people who have rescued him and probably a lot of favors, all right. So he is a very convoluted individual. Uh, in the midst of a real quagmire. And on top of all this, and this is the thing that's going to be interesting, you'll notice over here that the progressed midheaven has just entered into less than one degree of conjuncting his Pluto in the 12th house. All right. And when I saw this the very first time, I wondered if this was, quote, the end, the eventual end, okay, of Donald Trump. <clears throat> or if not, a sign that the end of his aspirations, okay, are before him, okay? Because you're talking about Pluto in the house of loss, which the 12th house is, okay? And uh, could this be an indication, all right, of him finally succumbing to the overall karma and fate and destiny? Or, to put it in another way, in a less uh, pleasant way, are all these aspects, Uranus conjuncting Algol, the progressive Midheaven conjuncting Pluto, okay, uh, are these an indication of his destiny and his fate to rise to a place of power that is unthinkable, okay? Unthinkable. You cannot look at this situation regarding Donald Trump and trust your emotions or the emotions of news or the emotions of anybody in politics, we don't know, okay? We don't know. We have suspicions, okay? We realize the criticalness of this time and the fact that Donald Trump's presence and what he's stirring up uh, and what is needed and the way that people are viewing it, that this is a time that requires some shocking activity and uh, uh, we can hope that the severity of that is at least tempered in a way that does not mag doesn't reach the magnitude of things that were seen in for example in world war ii okay so <clears throat> let's take a look at joe biden and hopefully what i'm hoping here is that <clears throat> excuse me you'll get a feel for who really is going to have the better night okay now here is Joe Biden, okay? This is the date, 9 o'clock, all right? You can see here that the sun is squaring his Neptune. Now, Donald Trump's Neptune and his Mercury are square, all right? I don't believe Joe Biden has anything like that in his natal chart. This could be a combination of nerves. It could be a combination of, uh, of the age factor, okay, that's playing on him. Uh, you can see down here that his transiting moon is in trines in the Sun and Mercury and Venus and Jupiter. Mercury trines this, the moon or the Sun. Mercury trines Mercury. Mercury conjuncts Jupiter. You can see right now that he has the advantage over Donald Trump on the 27th. Because his sense of presence, his sense of confidence is not going to be as heavily bombarded by the events in his life, okay? He has ability to speak fluidly, confidently, and truthfully will be much more evident than 
Donald Trump, his ability to talk about foreign affairs and politics. Okay, much more qualified and capable to do that. All right. All right. Again, there's Mercury trining Mercury, Mercury conjuncting. Okay, Jupiter, Mercury sextiling the midheaven. Venus trining Mars. Be interesting to see if Joe gets fired up. He could get angry too if Trump decides to try to overtake the whole thing with his antics. Mars will be opposing Mars. He will definitely be fighting for democracy. Okay. Jupiter conjuncts Saturn and Uranus. Okay. This again is a fortunate aspect. He has Jupiter in his seventh house in terms of communicating in Gemini with other people. Okay. So his ability to communicate He's much more able to communicate with the positive results he's hoping for with this particular combination. Saturn trines Mercury, his mind, his logic, his reasoning, okay, are very clear at this particular time. Okay, now here's where it gets a little bit interesting, okay, because we throw in Uranus, the unexpected, okay. Of course, in Donald Trump's natal chart, Uranus is very strong in his chart. In Donald or in Joe Biden's chart, Uranus opposing the Sun, Mercury, Venus, and the nodes. He has to be prepared for the unexpected. Okay, this is the thing. Again, this is the way that Donald Trump operates. It's the unexpected, or he has to be aware of unexpected events beyond his control. There is the possibility, people have talked about the fact that they don't think Trump or that Biden will show up. That's possible. Or something could happen and they decide to cancel it. Okay? Which, to be honest with you, would be to Donald Trump's you know, favor if that happened. Because, as I'm showing you here, other than this particular combination of aspects with Uranus, the unknown, um, it's not a good night for Donald Trump if he's hoping to gain more support. Okay. All right. Okay. Here is another, another little, uh, I guess you would say a little, another annoyance. Pluto does square Donald, or not Donald Trump, Joe Biden's moon. Okay. This again will be a challenge for Joe Biden. It, can he keep himself emotionally from losing control? Losing control of his emotions, losing control and focus of his thoughts upon the things that are significant and important. Okay, it won't bite be like he was during the State of the Union when he was talking down to the Supreme Court and uh, embarrassing them. This will be trying to essentially deliver a knockout blow to an individual who is the epitome of chaos and nonsense. Okay. And uh, if this particular debate goes through, I guess we'll find that out. Okay, we'll find that out. And uh, so, Joe Biden, when you're talking about, okay, the early aspects that I showed you with the sun and the moon and Venus, okay, and also Mercury, his outer exterior should be very confident and composed, but inside of himself, all right, it could be, he could be churning emotionally, okay, because of his own personal dislike and rage about Donald Trump, okay? So, other than the fact down here of Eris squaring, okay, Jupiter, okay, and Joe Biden's horoscope, that's about the extent of what we see going on here at this time. That particular aspect, again, could affect him. Okay, and his ability to uh, confidently deliver the way he would like to. Okay, again, the errors factor, strife and discord. Okay, trying to, in a sense, Trump's attempt to knock Biden off his game. All right, so it's going to be a chess match between the two individuals. And um, we can only hope that the charts are showing us here anyhow that 
in the end, the end result of this first debate is going to be Joe Biden coming out the winner. Okay, I generally don't do two videos in one day, but I felt like it was important, and this particular day is only two days away, and I wanted to go ahead and do it for my subscribers to give you a sense of what's happening. Okay, uh, as we always say, <clears throat> for those of you that are members and subscribers and make donations, thank you so much for your support of our work. It is helpful. As I mentioned, I think the last time it helps to pay for the large internet bill that um, we have to endure every month from Xfinity. And um, just your communication about the videos, just your being there is significant. Okay. Uh, it's what motivates me to want to share with you what is shared with me so that you are not only listening to the dread, the doubt, and the fear that comes across on network news, okay? Or those doomsday sayers that may believe that they can predict the outcome of all these things, okay? And uh, how easy it is to get sucked into those situations and then to suffer because it costs suffering, okay? If we're not centered within our own energy and our own conscious awareness and stuff and we're influenced mentally and emotionally by this dark energy, it weighs on you. It wears you out. This is another thing that Donald Trump is counting on, that by the election, that you and I will be so worn out, we'll say, why bother to vote? He wants people that want Joe Biden to win to get exhausted. Okay, and he's very good at it. Okay, I think I am done. And uh, I thank you all. From the love of my life, CJ, my spiritual partner, my best friend, my teacher, the love of my life. We both thank you for your support and we look forward to being of service to you throughout the election and beyond to help you to find your way home. Thank you again.